For the first time in history, a Predator movie has skipped the theatres and gone straight to streaming. The franchise is back with the newly released Prey coming four years after the critical and financial failure of The Predator back in 2018. The release of this film gave me an excuse to revisit this franchise also four years after I'd previously seen it to see if any of my opinions had changed or if they'd been cemented even more firmly in place. Well today you'll hear them as I'm going to rank all seven Predator movies from worst to best. As this is my ranking, it may not line up with yours, but I'm still interested to see what your opinions are, so let me know what your ranking is down below in the comments. And with that being said, let's get into it. Since original cast member Shane Black was directing The Predator, it seemed like nothing could go wrong as the franchise was in the hands of someone who was part of the original film, who even helped tweak the script of the original film as well. Shane Black has supposedly gone on to direct and write some really good films, I unfortunately haven't seen any of them. With that being said, there seems to be nothing that could go wrong for The Predator, yet everything went wrong. Shane Black played Hawkins in the original Predator, a character who was mainly there to beef up the kill count, but also there for the crude humour and it just feels like he infused his character's personality into this film way too much. It's not like they mention the character at all but the comedy is just way too much in this film and I didn't think I'd say that for a Predator film. But then again it doesn't feel right saying comedy because comedy is supposed to make you laugh and I didn't laugh in this film, in fact I was getting even more annoyed with each joke that happened. The comedy is pretty much 80% your mum jokes and None of them are that funny, and if it's not those sort of jokes, it's just other crude stuff. It generally feels written by a really immature kid, to be honest. It's so bad and excessive and non-stop that it makes an actor like Keegan-Michael Key really unbearable, when in reality, he is a really likeable guy. As I mentioned, for a franchise with this concept, it feels weird that my main complaint is the humour, but it's not just that, it's the tone overall, and obviously the comedy does play into it. Like, for example, another negative is the plot is way too absurd and over the top, and you can normally forgive a film like that if it's fun, enjoyable, but I just found myself having such a miserable time. Anything that may be considered good on paper is poorly executed, mainly thanks to the really lacklustre CGI and the odd decision to bring in predator dogs but also yeah just using a lot of CGI especially on the predators themselves who have always been practical effects or people dressing up as them there is of course people doing that here but there is still a lot of CGI predator stuff happening I thought I'd say this bit for last because it just hammers home how much of a bad film this is and how many poor decisions went into making it it makes morally insensitive decisions to use Tourette's as a punchline to many jokes as people with Tourette's tend to shout out crude things and not to mention it literally makes a kid it's autism a superpower to the point where it's just laughable. When I give a film a low rating on my rankings I normally confirm that it's a bad film but not only is The Predator a bad film but it's a film which manages to do something that not many do and it's one that I hate. To be honest, my most controversial opinion may be that this film isn't in last place because I know it is on so many people's lists, but this is by no means me saying it's a good, no, 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 it's a terrible film. After many were disappointed with Alien vs Predator being PG-13 rated, they decided to give this film an R rating, however, they didn't really utilise it in the way that many were hoping. It certainly delivers a much darker tone with gorier kills, well, at least we're meant to believe, as we can't see a thing and that is a main issue from this which anybody can point out whether they've seen a million films or just the one. The camera does cut away a lot, especially in the action scenes, but that's not really the main culprit of why things are so unclear. It really is that darkness. I constantly found myself struggling to determine what was on the screen. The majority of the screen time that took place during the day was spent developing these human characters, you know, characters who we don't care about in an Alien vs Predator movie. They're the most generic cliche characters and I don't care if Ricky gets with Jessie after having a crush on her for so many years. I want to see clear, brutal action and unfortunately the film just spends way too much time on these human characters and oddly tries to interweave a lot of their stories to the point where they end up merging together towards the end, but I just don't see why the need was in a film of this stature. Nobody comes into an Alien vs Predator movie wanting to find out about these humans' lives. No, if anything, we want them there to be killed, and while that does eventually happen, Spoiler, sorry. They just spend way too much time not even developing them well, just devoting them screen time. But besides them, there is of course potential for a good film here as 
tackles a darker tone as mentioned, but the lighting really does ruin any quality. YouTube channel Dead Meat, who I'm a massive fan of, had to increase the brightness for the footage of this film when covering it, and it just shows how poorly lit it is. On a story level, there isn't really much of one. My brain felt a bit numb trying to stick with it for the entire runtime given the difficult viewing circumstances. So despite making changes that AVP fans called for in this sequel, it still manages to deliver a worse experience. Taking your main attraction out of its natural environment and dumping it into the city in film is normally a sign of when you're running low on ideas within your franchise. Most infamously known with Jason Takes Manhattan, the 8th entry into the Friday the 13th franchise. Predator 2 is the first sequel in the Predator franchise, so it feels very odd that that was the direction they decided to go in. It feels completely unrelated to the original, which in some ways is a positive as it's not a rehash, but in the same sense you lose all the great things about that film. The city environment takes away that claustrophobic feel of the original and not to mention now that we know what the Predator is, its mysterious story this time around isn't as intriguing. But other than that the tone is just very different. As a whole the film struggles to replicate the same feeling of tension as I mentioned so therefore the plot really struggles. To be honest in general the film is pretty dull and boring besides subtle glimpses of real campiness which can feel a bit out of place. That stems through the characters, but also a few jokes, especially one of the most controversially on the nose jokes. Want some candy? Well, well, well. How the turntables. At the end of the day, it could be a lot better. With rewatch, I did enjoy it a little bit more, but to be honest, it's probably the most forgettable on this list. <laughs> I actually enjoy Alien vs Predator a lot more than others and that's not for me to say that I think it's a good film because on paper it's not great in terms of filmmaking but the title is Alien vs Predator so I'm never going into this expecting an Oscar worthy movie and for the most part I think it delivers on what the title promises. As I've mentioned in this video the PG-13 rating is frustrating, especially when it comes to the action and the tone, because it doesn't make a lot of sense due to the both franchises being R-rated up until this point. I thought the Aztec-esque environment made for quite a refreshing viewing, and one of the strongest parts about this film, one which isn't talked about enough when talking about this film, it makes for some interesting scenarios which do lead to some nice kills, although none which are that memorable. For once in a film of this nature, I didn't actually think the human characters were that bad. Bad, and no, they weren't amazing, they're never going to be, but I think they were given the right amount of screen time, nothing more, but then enough for you to kind of remember them other than being generic characters. Look, it's designed to have aliens fight predators, and last time I checked, that's what this film does correctly, and while it could be a lot better as the age rating holds it back, for the most part, I enjoyed what we got with this one. It delivers a fair bit of entertainment, which does kind of breeze past some of the story issues, which I was okay with. <laughs> Predators wisely take the franchise back to its roots within the jungle after many years away from it, and while I was somewhat disappointed with the final product, there is certainly quality within this film. The concept is very similar to the original, but has enough differences from it that it does warrant making its own film. Differences which have some good and some bad, which really worsen the quality of overall film. The main issue I actually have is the characters, which from what I've seen hasn't been too much of a big issue. I just felt as though the characters were very stereotypical in the sense, like, of course you're going to get that with this film, but also the reason they are in this film is because they are bad people, and while it does make somewhat of an attempt to give them an arc, I still didn't find it enough to root for them, especially when they were still doing pretty dark things, especially saying stuff like this. What time is it? Five o'clock? Damn. Time to go rape me some fine bitches. Predators expands the creature's mythology in a nice way and provides some fun yet over the top action. Depending what mood you're in, that could be fine or could be annoying, which makes it even more frustrating when it crumbles with its final act. I think it sits comfortably in this third spot, decently far away from fourth and quite far away from second now.
everyone had written off this film before a trailer was even released due to it being the first film to be chucked on a streaming service without a theatrical release. And I won't lie, I didn't have high expectations, especially given the success of Predator sequels. But as soon as that first trailer dropped, my expectations stormed up. So at the end of the day, I was thoroughly surprised with this film. Just like Predators, Prey takes this back to its roots with a, with a forest-esque environment, but it removes all the sci-fi elements, all the over-the-top stuff from the other films and makes it a real simple story. One which feels like it's returning back to its horror roots rather than, as I mentioned, sci-fi. The environment allows the Predator to build up his presence and deliver a really, and help make a really tense movie. Maybe a bold statement, but I think this is the scariest version of the Predator that we've had in this entire franchise, purely because he isn't as reliant on technology and his weapons here. We do see it get his hands dirty quite a lot, as this is set a long time before the original. It makes sense given that his technology isn't as advanced as it is later on. It just shows how strong of a creature it is without having to rely on its arsenal. Following on from that, the Predator's story is actually very fascinating, I found, as it kind of challenges all the animals it comes across to determine what is the, the alpha in the animal kingdom. The story is simple, the action is brutal. It feels like a carefully constructed Predator story, not just a mindless action sci-fi best. It massively exceeded expectations, and to be honest, I had to sit down and think about it, because some parts I did enjoy a lot more than my number one pick. And that number one pick is, of course, Predator, the original. Predator was never really made to be a mega franchise, it seems I could be wrong. However, it's hard to deny the potential it has. It is a very self-contained film, one which has only really been replicated in the more recent editions, not the Predator. And it creates large amounts of tension, especially by not showing the actual Predator until the final act. The concept is pretty simple and I feel like this franchise has thrived when the concept has been simple. And while you may be able to predict the outcome, there are a lot of things which kind of throw you off guard with the way it gets there as it doesn't play out like your average action movie. The feeling of being watched without actually knowing what it is is the big tension builder and yes, watching it for the first time is probably the best experience you'll get of this as you don't really know what is watching you and what the creature looks like. But I think one of the strongest aspects of this film is keeping the Predator invisible or out of sight up until the final act. Because once it shows it off, it doesn't disappoint with the design. Don't get me wrong, Predator is a good movie, clearly having spawned this franchise, but for me it isn't top tier, especially compared to the first two Alien films. Whilst it's not as bad as what else comes in this franchise, the characters are somewhat forgettable other than Arnie. The special effects haven't aged well and I'm not really holding that against this film at all in terms of my school because of course special effects are going to outdate in some films. There were just some odd decisions at times and some script inconsistencies and while I may be harsh on that is because I'm not really nostalgic for this film, I didn't grow up watching it. This is only the second time I watched it in preparation for this video. But don't get me wrong, I do find it a good film, I just don't hold it on as high of a pedestal as others. As I mentioned earlier on, I am eager to see your rankings down below, so make sure you leave them in the comments. And while you're there, if you could please like and subscribe, that would be really appreciated. I was generally surprised at how difficult this list was. There were obviously some picks which were easily in their position, but others were quite difficult, especially the new edition of Prey, where... It got a lot closer to my first pick than I ever thought it would do. But at the end of the day, the original comes out on top, just like it does in many cases. However, not as easily as in most here. I'm going abroad for a week very soon, so there may be some delays on my videos, especially my Jordan Peele ranking and my Better Call Saul ranking, as their final releases don't come out until around the time I'm going away, or even when I am away and I don't intend to record on my holiday as it's the first time I've gone away for quite some time. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and I also hope to see you in my next video.